Hello, U.S. History B students. Uh, it's your lovely teacher, Mr. Peer, again. Uh, long time no see. Uh, <clears throat> okay, this will be our review module. And uh, yeah, I think it'll help you out. Same formatting, though. And, and with each test, you will see that we will have fewer uh, objective questions, uh, fill in the blank, true or false matching. And we will have a little bit more points on the um, free response. Again, trying to simulate a concurrent enrollment AP-like experience that the, the writing is mattering. In fact, those of you who are taking some AP tests know that that free response is, for many of them, really what they're doing, period, um, for the test. <clears throat> so that is that more subjective thing, but it means detail, detail, detail. Okay, uh, and our final test for the tribe will probably be, well, not completely free response, but close to it, right? All right, so uh, the first one. I guess we'll do it by sections. We can do fill in, fill in the blank first if you want. Uh, the blank and the blank were constitutional proof found in Article 1 and Article 4 respectively that the national government could control slavery. Okay, the blank and the blank were constitu constitutional proof that the national government could control slavery. Okay... Ding, 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 ding. Yes, that would be the Three-Fifths Compromise and the Fugitive Slave Act, right? So, so in stating this, it's a double-edged sword here, but the national government says like, hey, it's in the national constitution. Because remember in the 10th Amendment, it states anything not in the constitution goes to the states, right? And so the national government says, hey, we've specifically mentioned Three-Fifths Compromise, Fugitive Slave Act um, uh, in Article 4, in Article uh, 1, uh, well, Fugitive Slave Act is Article 4, and uh, uh, as well as the, the Three-Fifths Compromises in Article 1 um, for representation. So looking at all of that, the national government says, we've mentioned it, it's in the Constitution, therefore we should be able to control it, right? Whatever the national government says, even if the state doesn't want to do it. So the blank and the blank were uh, Three-Fifths Compromise and Fugitive Slave Act. That's a two-pointer, so make sure you're good on that. Um, okay, uh, number two. I mean, just random questions that have no real correlation with what you'll see on, on Monday. Uh, John Brown tried to incite a rebellion at what location? That's right, Keziah. It's Harper's Ferry. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, imaginary candy thrown your way. Um, uh, it is Harper's Ferry. That's the location that we're looking for there. Right, was a... Uh, Proceeding factor into the start of the Civil War, and uh, even though John Brown was not really sponsored by the federal government or the Union, the Confederate States sort of took that as um, an insult. Okay. Um, uh, so the Battle of Blank, which had no human ca casualties, was the official start of the Civil War. <clears throat> what is that? Ding, ding, ding. Fort Sumter. Yes, Fort Sumter. Um, right off the coast there, Fort Sumter <clears throat> in the south. There was Anderson and Beauregard who were going at it. They were friends, and it was sad that they didn't, you know, that they had to go through that. <clears throat> okay, now this is something we did not mention. I, I didn't have it in the notes, but I, I'm curious to see... Um, if anybody can make the connection here, there was a U.S. president who famously from the state of Illinois, who was actually on a lot of license plates and so forth and everything like that. Um, and he did have some time in the military. Uh, and there was a, a really rough battle that Andrew Jackson, uh, as the commander in chief and president, ordered to have happen uh, called Black Hawk War. It was a rough one. Anybody know what president was actually a soldier in that war? Ding, 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 ding. It's President Lincoln. Yeah, so Lincoln was a soldier in the Black Hawk War. Yeah, that was... An, we didn't mention it in the notes or the videos, <clears throat> but that was an interesting connection piece. And I thought, so now I'm telling you, Black Hawk War. Uh, he wasn't a general, or rather, he was commander-in-chief of the Civil War, but he wasn't. It also shows that he had some experience within the military. Um, okay. This is a little bit harder, it's a Latin term, but Lincoln suspended the writ of blank in the border states after the start of the Civil War, or the border states of Delaware, and Maryland, Kentucky, etc. Um, the writ of, right, W-R-I-T of, 
It means show the body. Yes, writ of habeas corpus. Uh, remember in the border states that was suspended and Lincoln being a perfect politician, he didn't want to deal with them. <laughs> so if anybody looked like a rebel, they were thrown in jail. Um, and, uh, and so that was the writ of habeas corpus. Uh, two words there. <clears throat> now, mind you, spelling. Some of you are like, I can't spell habeas corpus, Mr. Peer. Or Harper's Ferry. Give it your good college try. And as long as it's not like writ of um, ex post facto, <laughs> then you'll be fine. If there's an H in there and a C in there, I think we'll be okay. Uh, habeas corpus. Um, next one. The Emancipation Proclamation did not free the slaves in the... Remember, he's the consummate politician. He didn't actually make that. What's it going to be? Caitlin, yes, it is the border states. Yeah, he, the Emancipation Proclamation did not free the slaves in the border states. <clears throat> Important. Sorry, I got a frog in my throat here. <clears throat> Important that he chose not to do it. Uh, why? Because he didn't want to alienate those border states. The Emancipation Proclamation was a bold move. And if anybody who's on the fence about Lincoln just having the Union back together, if they were on the fence about him, if he freed their slaves, so to speak, or one, or if they believed that the slaves shouldn't be freed, he didn't want to lose their potential support. Right? That's, uh, that's an impressive one. Okay. <clears throat> Still going with the uh, fill in the blank. The greatest invention in the Industrial Revolution was harnessing the power of what? Not nuclear energy. Steam. Steam. I'll even accept an exclamation mark in that. Um, the greatest invention in the Industrial Revolution was harnessing the power of steam. Um, okay. Teddy Roosevelt's political stance changed somewhat after reading Upton Sinclair's What's the Name of That Book? Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. Yes, The Jungle. So his stance changed. He was more of a progressive. <clears throat> um, and hence, uh, just to, not going to test you on this, but he, he tried to. He was a Republican, right? He turned progressive. He was more of moderate. He went into some government intervention. Many capitalists within the Republican Party said, no, 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 no. Um, uh, uh, but but with that said, um, as, the, as he wanted to go about doing change, he felt like even Taft, his VP, all the people that he was closest to who were Republican, he felt like he distanced himself more and more from them. Um, and so he became more of a progressive Republican. And uh, so you had a lot of people going for Republican, Democrat, and this third part of the bull moose party. So you had the idea of like the donkeys, you know, who are stubborn and let's go, Andrew Jackson, donkey. And then you got the Republicans, like the elephants, who don't change, forget a lot, because they want to conserve and keep it the same. And the Bull Moose Party, he wanted to have like as an in between, you know, as a, a fighter type thing, more Republican, uh, but also have an in between stance where I can be stubborn in like a Democrat way too. Uh, it failed. <laughs> Our political system isn't set up to have a third party because we are a winner take all system. Um, so, you know, it, people ask like. Mr. Peer, do you think that we'd ever have a third party? Uh, a legitimate third party with actual seats. Um, uh, we have too many things that are winner take all, meaning <clears throat> even if somebody gets 49% of the vote, they lose. So yeah, as a voter, as political support, you have one or the other. We have too many elections that are uh, majority or winner take all, and so it, it would probably serve for a third party to have more of a proportional representation system uh, put in. Okay, uh, let's go to our next section here, and that is, or rather, sorry, our last uh, fill in the blank. Progressivism had to change the Constitution's tax system with the blank amendment, right? So this is where I need you to remember the actual number of the amendment, not just like progressive tax, or not just writing in like, it's where they take your money before you even see it, or, you know, it's the number 16th. Yes, yes, progressivism had to change the Constitution's tax system with the 16th Amendment. Yes. Okay. Um, and, you know, 17th was direct election of senators, and um, uh, 18th was prohibition, 19th women voting, uh, 21st they had to get rid of the prohibition, so it was, there's a lot of mixed ones there. I guess the right analogy that I'm trying to say here 
Okay, some of you might be able to relate to this. Sometimes, like, when you... Mm, it's rare, but when you haven't had a lot of sleep, when you've been overworked, there's this weird nirvana, lucid state where, like, you're not too high, you're not too low, and, like, you come up with, like, really good ideas. It might be at 3 a.m. in the morning, but you come up with really good ideas, like, moments of inspiration, like, this works, this works. But you're also really tired, and you're also not very coherent, so you write down a lot of these ideas. Or you might wake up in the middle of the night from a good dream and having inspiration of, like, yeah! And, like, two days later, you wake up from that hangover-like state of, <laughs> like, lack of sleep, and you look at your list, and you're like, some of these ideas are good, and some of those are just gibberish. The Progressive Errors Amendments could fit into that category. Direct election of senators, um, when our founders had specific reasons for separating them. Uh, prohibition. Yeah. But then you got women voting. It's like, awesome, game on, this works. Um, progressive tax, you know, could be more controversial. So there's that good and bad from that moment, and maybe the, these progressive era amendments, 16 through 21, uh, could be seen as that. 20 is just the more logistical one, uh, moving the inauguration date earlier. Okay, uh, let's see. True and false. Let's go true and false. Since Thomas Jefferson and George Washington did, look, since Thomas Jefferson and George Washington did not have slaves, the South had to look for different leaders think about it because Thomas Jefferson and George Washington were in Virginia they were southern leaders false both of them did have slaves right so that's what makes our, our founding sort of weird and murky is that we had slave owners but it was also judging by the context of their time and it's murky um, but false they didn't have to look for different leaders they had them and Washington and Jefferson had slaves uh, true or false, Lincoln's inauguration was riddled with fear and uncertainty. Referring to his first one. Oh yeah, true, 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 true. I mean, he was under a threat of death and dismemberment. Um, southern states who were seceded didn't really vote, and so the number game was weird of who actually won. Um, yeah. Okay, even the South uh, had no industrial complex, it did not affect them in the Civil War because of the relationship with Europe. Right? Right? No problem. Britain's like, yeah, let's get back. Let's sort of divide up the country and we'll get a little bit of some petty revenge, if you will. Um, we can just help the South. False. False. No, like, even when Europe was trying to help them out, remember Ulysses S. Grant did a huge blockade in the South. Even my son knows about the blockade in the South. Um, that prevented them from actually getting uh, any support. So it did hurt him, so that's false. Okay, uh, next one with Grant's victory at Vicksburg and the blockade. The South shipping routes were effectively cut off, right? Because if Grant's there on the side with the blockade and then they win the Vicksburg thing, the South did have the Mississippi River, they were cut off. True, true that is, that get, gets cut off and it's true um, because now the, the seaboard is gone and the river routes are gone so they're getting economically choked out. Okay, uh, martial law is just another way of saying there is no habeas corpus. So whenever you hear martial law, I'm declaring martial law. We didn't talk about this. We talked about habeas corpus. Are they two in the same? True. True. And that's why these review modules are good at making those connections. Yes, I'm declaring martial law means that they're suspending um, a lot of times people think it's like, oh, marshals come in. No, no, no. It means they're suspending the writ of habeas corpus, where if you were even thought of as doing something good, or rather bad, they'll throw you in jail. They don't need to have a reason. Um, that's martial law. Okay, uh, next to or false, the average standard of living in America went down in the Industrial Revolution. Let me make the argument, people are dying in mines, or trying to shirtwaist factory fire. Now, overall, it's false. This is the hard thing. The average standard of living went up. There are very pointed and poignant moments of tragedy for people, but it actually went up. Um, so that is false, right? Okay, next one. Women, um, women did not fight as hard for voting right pre-industrial revolution because they were co-equals on the farm. Ooh, this is intense, man. This is... 
Um, a lot of historians look back to pre-industrial revolution era where it wasn't like living in the cities and having like the specialization of labor and it was just like, I'm on a farm. Um, many historians actually think, why? Like think of the Seneca Falls Convention, you'll, you'll hear about that. Why weren't more females like, yes, let's go and do this, women's rights, 1830. Um, a lot of the reasons as to why women weren't in this dire need, the historians will look back at it, is the subsistence, subsistence farming had the husband and wife as co-equals on the farm as being co-CEOs of making sure their business and family were doing okay. And only when they had um, factories and the specialization of labor and, and women sort of diminished over here and men put in this other spot there and this disparity start to happen, did you start to see in the industrial revolution more and more women fighting for women's rights? So that's true. Yeah, women did not fight as hard for voting right pre-industrial revolution because they were co-equals on the farm. That was not the case everywhere. But there was a disconnect of like, why did they start fighting for it more in you know 1880s, 1890s? They did in 1830s. Oh, it was the Industrial Revolution that helped sort of divide the family in a way um, that they, they wanted to fight more. So there is that, that argument for sure. Okay, uh, let's see. Next one, the progressive tax is a flat tax that taxes everyone regardless of income with the same percentage. Flat tax. False. <laughs> false. You're, you're, uh, Braden, you're right on. That's false. Uh, progressive tax is the big you know, sliding scale up there. That is false. Um, okay. Final true and false. The trill, excuse me. The children were required to go to school in the Industrial Revolution. Ah, oh, ha, 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 ha. This is false. Look at the wording there. The children were required to go to school in the Industrial Revolution. Now, remember, Industrial Revolution predates, right, Advent of Steam. We're talking 1860s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and then into the 20th century, 1910, 1920, is the Progressive Era. So Industrial Revolution first, then the Progressive Era. So children weren't required to go to school in the Industrial Revolution. No, they go work in the mines, sweatshops, Triangle Shirtwaist Factory had tons of young child laborers. And then the progressive era in the 10s and the 20s hit, and that turned it into, oh, compulsory laws. So that's why it's false. They didn't have to go to school in the Industrial Revolution, only in the progressive era. Okay, let's go to matching. Um, uh, this group from West Point primarily went to fight for the South, right? Teachers or professors. This one's often considered one of the worst presidents due to his inaction. Now, think of the content that we have here. We're not going to be talking as much about Jackson on this test, right? So let's put him out of the way. It would be, ding, 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 Buchanan, right? One of the worst. Jackson would probably be considered the worst, but one of the worst here is Buchanan. Um, <clears throat> okay, this side had population as an advantage during the Civil War. North or South? North. This side had brains as an advantage during the Civil War. South. Lincoln uh, made many military decisions without the approval of Congress. This general <clears throat> uh, marched from Atlanta to Savannah, burning everything in his path. General Sherman. A devastating ha fire happened here in 1911. That, you know, that's the one main factory. We talk about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. Good. Um, this was one of uh, the most famous agencies that came out of the Progressive Era. I won't make this hard. I'm not going to put like DCFS in there. And EPA comes later. FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Okay. A movement that wanted the national government to regulate. Uh, make sure I'm telling you the right thing here. Uh, yeah, okay. So a movement that wanted the national government to regulate. Uh, families and agencies for breaking other regulations. Progressivism. Progressivism, right? That's the movement. Okay, last one. <clears throat> a Republican turned progressive president. Hint, hint, he's the youngest president to ever serve. That's Teddy Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. TR. Now, free response. I'm going to help you guys out here a little bit. But also, you need to, the biggest thing is you need to give detail. Biggest thing here. Don't give me little hash mark things. You gotta give restate, identify, continue, example. And I, I give a huge shout out 
to uh, Mitchell. Mitchell nailed that last assignment. He got it. That's exactly what we need. Restate, identify, continue example. That's the AP model. That's mini college social science model. Awesome. Okay. Explain the North and South's constitutional arguments over who should control slavery. Here, it's we've already alluded to it on the other part of the test. You want to state that there is the Fugitive Slave Act, which allows states to give the other slave who escapes back to the individual state slave owner, and that's from the Article 4. And in Article 1, there is the Three-Fifths Compromise, which has uh, uh, slaves counted as three-fifths of the person. You want to start there and then say the North interpreted that as saying anything in the Constitution we are allowed to control, and therefore we've mentioned the Constitution, we can change this up if there's a federal change, federal constitutional change, whatever. And the South takes the same information and says, no, these parts, while mentioning the Constitution, are allowing state slave owners to have autonomy, and therefore they should still be allowed to keep doing it, right? You want to start with the Fugitive Slave Act and Three-Fifths Compromise. And North says, it's in the Constitution. We can control it and change it. Therefore, it's not up to the states. And the states say, no, it's already mentioned in the Constitution. Therefore, you don't want to change those things up just by tradition. You can go into more detail if you want, saying it's a liberty versus liberty argument. This isn't really a liberty security argument we'll see come into play in Unit 3 with internment camps and stuff like that. This is a liberty for the North of liberty for all and a liberty for some argument in that liberty for those to make the decisions of slave owners but not liberty for those who are blacks right like there is a division on that um that's what you want to start with okay next one describe uh, the changes of the constitution which were made to pull the weeds of slavery from america this is a doozy you need to mention 13th amendment in which that abolishes slavery 14th amendment and that it has three clauses. It, it's made to make sure there isn't general racial discrimination and other types of discrimination. But there's the Privileges and Immunities Clause, um, which has a person giving the same rights that jumps to another state. Has the Equal Protection Clause, which says everybody is treated the same equally. And has the Due Process Clause, in that you have to have a trial by jury and by a law that was passed by a majority body. And then finally, there's the 15th Amendment in that it uh, allowed black men to vote. Those three Reconstruction Amendments, you, you have to mention, and the three different clauses within the 14th Amendment. Okay, final thing here. Define both parts of the progressive tax and explain in detail what the biggest disadvantage of it is. Um, the biggest disadvantage, I'll give a little bit more room for interpretation there, because it's, it's up to debate, right? Um, but the two parts of it is that the federal government can touch money before you see it, right, in terms of their taxes. And that also means that they can tax rich more at a higher percentage, and the poor none or very little at all. It's not a flat tax. Those are the two things I'm really looking for. Biggest disadvantage, it could potentially make people lazy. Um, uh, you're not really aware of the government taking money away from you. I'm trying to have you... I guess evaluate this, um, uh, but yeah, that's potentially could make people lazy because why work more when you could get more government benefit and agencies for free at the end? If I work more, I get taxed more. So there's that. Um, okay, that's your review module. Good luck. I'll send the test out on Monday, and then we'll go from there for unit three. Okay. Good luck, everybody.